Hello, hello, and welcome to week 10 of my training vlog for London Marathon. Now, you may be wondering, if you're a regular to viewers of the channel, what happened to weeks 8 and 9 of the vlog? Well, I'll tell you. So, you last saw me on week 7, and that was a peak week before a down week the following week, where I was going to be running Chelmsford Half Marathon. The problem I have with race day is I get nervous. I'm very self-conscious about filming in public. Anyway, and I don't tend to film much. Um, did a tiny bit picking up the race number. I did a very small amount of filming while I was running, right near the end. So what I'll do is I'll quickly post a little bit of that now so you can see that footage and then I'll give you a proper breakdown of what happened. Hi, welcome back to the Fat Runner channel. It's week eight of training for London Marathon 2023. And today is actually Sunday. It's quarter past seven in the morning. And I'm in Chelmsford for Chelmsford Half Marathon. So those of you who have uh, watched the channel for some time now may remember that I got a PB here back in March last year, 2022. That's not going to happen today. Um, and they've changed the course very slightly as well. I don't know how slightly. They've changed the course apparently. But anyway, so this is uh, basically my long run for the week. I'm not racing, racing it. Um, the plan is... I'm going to go out a marathon pace for the first six miles. Then I'm going to see how I feel and either maintain marathon pace, pull back, maybe push on. I don't know. Probably not. So I've not actually raced raced a half marathon since August. <sighs> Coming back from injury, got injured in October last year, so haven't really. I don't really know what my half marathon pace is at the moment, to be quite honest. So I wouldn't really know what to go for. So previously it would be nine minute miles, so I don't know, maybe a nine and a half. Anyway, so the main focus, this is not an A race by any means, this is a little, just a little tune up, just to get my strategy right, my kit right. Um, so it doesn't really matter what time I get today, although I would like. I think probably the best thing is going to be just to run the whole thing at marathon pace. So, according to the training plan, today's run was actually supposed to be 12 miles. Look at this little bridge. Look. Whee! Nice, isn't it? So today's run is supposed to be 12 miles easy. Um, well, obviously it's going to be 13 and at more intense pace so I did speak to the coaches that I have access to as part of uh, from the charity that I'm running London for and they suggested basically to make a few tweaks to my plan last week and next week to compensate so last week I took all the in pretty much most of the intensity out of my long run and just did virtually all of it at uh, easy pace um, this week I did five miles easy on Tuesday, and then Wednesday I did I did like a steady 10k as opposed to the interval session I was planned. And then they suggested next week that my interval session I just change that to a steady 10k as well. And the most important thing is I can't push myself today. If I'm getting a niggle or it's getting too much, I need to pull back because. I don't want to injure myself and not do London. Oops, squirrel over there. Hello. So, I'm in Chelmsford really early because annoyingly I've got to go pick my race number up because they decided, um, they gave one day where you could pick them up in advance and that one day was a day I couldn't do. I wasn't in Chelmsford that week and they gave less than a week's notice of what that day was, which I was not very impressed about already moaned about this on my last video so apologies if you're hearing it again but piss me off so 
it really annoyed me. So now I've got to get here really early to make sure I'm not stressing out and queuing up. I've also realised I haven't brought any safety pins with me. So I really hope they've got safety pins. Otherwise, I don't know, I'm going to hold my race number the whole time round. You know, it's things like this you could do without really on race day. Like, it's stressful enough trying to remember everything else without having to mess about, oh, I've got to bring safety pins or this, that, and the other. You know, normally, night before, I pin my race number on my bib, job done. There we go, never mind. So, moaning over with. So that's been the week so far. Um, I've also had to park fairly far away from the start and finish because I think I explained this in the last video. My car, I've got I drive like a tall van, and uh, the car parks nearby have got height restrictions, and the car's too high. But anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I'll check back in when we get to uh, Race HQ. <laughs> Right, race number is picked up. I didn't really get a chance to film because I kind of got mobbed as soon as I got in there. But race number is on. And now heading over to the bag drop, which is over here. Right, so I haven't done much filming today. I've got 10 miles in. I'm pretty much back on 10 minute mile pace, which is very slightly quicker than marathon pace. Around the pace is 10, 10 to 10, 30. But it's feeling okay, it's feeling comfortably uncomfortable. I can still talk as you can hear. So, I'm just going to carry on like this to the finish, I think. I was following the 2.15 pace, but she's gone off too quick. She's a good minute or so ahead of me. So, God knows what time she's going to finish. About 2.12, I reckon. This is good. Positive. Anyway, let's get on with it. Catch you at the end. Okay, so there you go, there's the very small footage I took. So, I ended up, my official time, if I remember correctly, was 2.10.52. If it's not, I will correct myself on the screen. So, as you saw in that little clip, it's faster than my planned 2.15 pace. Um, I just felt it was fairly comfortable to hold 10 minute mile pace it was nice and easy so not easy but it felt comfortably uncomfortable and it didn't help that the 215 pace was miles off pace um, we were running with her I ran with her for about the first two miles and one of the other chaps I was running with he was saying to me I'm sure this is too fast so you mentioned it to her. She was like, no, no, no. So anyway, I realized by mile three, she was going way too fast. I think the first three miles we'd done in like under 10 minutes. And I was like, each of the three miles was under 10 minutes, not the whole three miles in under 10 minutes. That'd have been impressive. So I decided just to drop back and do my own thing, which I did. And then from that moment on, that 2.15 pace that was ahead of me, but on virtually the whole race. With half a mile to go, she must have realized massively slowed down because it wasn't until half a mile to go that I overtook her. Bearing in mind, I was basically doing extremely consistent 10 minute mile pace. So, yeah, I mean, none of these people are volunteers. She was very nice. I had a lovely chat with her near the beginning, but unfortunately, she was too quick. So anyway, so that was the end of week eight. That was all fine. And then the next day, the sun, uh, Monday, I have a lot of pain in my the arch of my left foot and a bit of a pain going down my right foot thigh, I suppose. Top of my right leg. So, I guess I was probably pushing a little bit more than I realized. Aerobically, I felt fine. And 
uh, I didn't feel like I was pushing through any niggles or injuries or anything or any pain but it took its toll let's put it that way so it's probably the fastest I've run for quite some time for that length of time anyway and I paid for it a bit to be honest so week nine I missed running for the first couple of days to see how it went I then did a run on the Wednesday which is four miles I think four or five miles it was okay it wasn't the most comfortable run in the world but it was all right and then the next day the foot pain was back with a vengeance as was the muscle pain in my top of my right leg so I decided a long run that week was not a good idea and I rested yeah I also last week had my quiz night I'll talk about that in a little while so that was week nine grand total of four miles um, four or five miles can't remember which I'll put that on the screen as well and then that was it so and that brings us to week 10 which is where we are now I'm on my long run my long run is I'm five miles in the planned long run is 18 miles so I was humming and ahhing about it so basically so today's Friday which is when I normally did my long run I did my first run of the week on Wednesday which was just a four miles easy just to make sure I was okay again and I was so I'm not really feeling any pain or discomfort today, which is good. So the plan last week, the long run was supposed to be 18 miles and this week it was supposed to be 20 and then 20 the following week and then 22 the week after, then it's time for taper. So the thing I've learned with this training block is I'm looking more now at the bigger picture rather than just each week in isolation. And I thought to myself, well, I had a down week where, to be fair, I did where well, I was supposed to do 12 miles easy for my long run and ended up doing 13 miles at a much higher intensity. So that was obviously a bit too much. So, anyway, so effectively, I missed a week of training. I did do one small run. But no long run last week, no speed session last week. I thought, well, let's take it easy. I've still got three weeks left of long runs. And rather than just leaping straight back in at 20 miles, I'm going to do 18. And I'm also going to do them all at an easy pace. But for the plan that was supposed to be um, some race pace miles in there, but I've decided because... I did a big high intensity session on race day that I'm going to chat out for a bit because which I'll talk about in a minute which well leads me which leads me on to my next point so charity fundraiser so as you probably know I'm running a lot of marathon for a charity this year charity is called well child i've now got my race vest for them which is here you probably can't see it very well because i've got my running pack on again it's purple i need to be destined as a run in purple purple is the color of my running club it was the color of Crohn's and colitis which i did the vitality big half and virtual under marathon for and well child are also purple so there you go so anyway uh, I pledged to reach £1,600, which I've been struggling with that target, to be honest. Um, donations haven't been quite as forthcoming as I thought, and a lot of that probably is because I started very early on in the process trying to raise the money. I think a lot of people would rather give the money once you actually do the run, which is fair enough. So I held a quiz night, Saturday just gone, with about two, three weeks to go, there weren't many teams confirmed and I was really worried the whole thing was going to be a complete flop as a result 
I was quite stressed out about that. And I was spending a lot of time last week preparing for the quiz. So again, didn't really have any time to edit, do any video editing, which is why I haven't done any videos. Another reason why. So anyway, long story short, the evening, I ended up with nine teams confirmed. Some at quite last minute, but the attendance was amazing in the end. Had people turn up. I was expecting Doug. Big shout out to you, mate. He's a viewer of my channel. And uh, you may have seen him on my channel last year. Um, he turned up out of the blue, <laughs> joined a team. And yeah, it was great to see him. And great to see so many other people. So, long story short, um, after. So, the total raffle ticket sales plus money for the quiz teams minus the cost of the haul I raised around £455 I think it was which is brilliant but then um, several people who had already attended the quiz decided to make additional donations online and that figure went up to plus then I think my parents sent the link out to a few more friends and ended up receiving another additional at nearly 200 pounds so i'm now only i think about 160 pounds off my total fundraising target which is a massive weight off my mind because i was really worried about it but that also brings more pressure because now i've got 50 60 people who've paid money <laughs> towards my fundraisers so got to make sure I'm well enough to do it which is why now you know this this race this marathon is he's not really about me now it's about the charity and it's about coming through for the charity and the people that sponsored me because you know they sponsored me at the end of the day that yeah they're raising money for the charity but they're doing it for me ultimately to support me as my friends and family so I don't want to let people down so I've decided that the ego in terms of chasing a, a really fast time for me like sub you know 4.30 I'm going to need to forget that and most important thing is I get to that start line last year I got injured late in the day and a lot of that was caused by me I think just focusing on each run not looking at the bigger picture not holding back a bit if I was having aches and pains I mean by the end of that last final run my calves are so tight but you know, I wasn't stretching enough. And I've got to admit, I've not been great doing my strength work. I've not, I've got to admit, I've not been great doing my strength work the last four or five weeks. So I absolutely need to get on that as well because that is so important. So strength work, taking the long ones a bit easier, I think, and also you know, just taking the run this week down a little bit in length and intensity. So that's it. Getting sensible in my old age. So I did think, well, you know, I feel how I see how I feel. And if I I'm okay at 18 miles, I'll do another two, but to be honest, I'm probably not gonna have time. And also, you know, sometimes you don't realise you're overdoing it at the time. And that's exactly what happened in Chelmsford. I felt alright, I felt fine, and then it turned out I'd actually overdone it slightly, so and that's fine if it's your A race and on the day I can push a bit harder that's fine but with only three weeks of you know, peak training left to go before I hit the taper I've got to be sensible so that's it um, it's plodding along really about 12 minute miling so it's very slow and I'm really not feeling really comfy I'm feeling really tuned into my body one, a nice meditative, chilled out state. Doesn't really feel like an effort, not there anyway. And I'm nearly six miles in. So I need to start taking on some fluids and nutrition. I've only brought two water bottles out with me, so I'm gonna plan a pit stop at the shop at some point to fill up. There we go, that's lap six. 
12 and a half minutes that one, so very slow, but I have been chatting to you guys as well. But yeah, so, um, I was very apprehensive about the run today, but you know, six miles is still feeling this good. It's encouraging, I've still got uh, two thirds of the way to go, but yeah, and that relief of that fundraising is you know, virtually all that's done now. I'm sure the rest of that money will just come in naturally when I start posting on Facebook about having completed the run. When I do complete it in six weeks' time, five weeks' time, six weeks, whenever it is. Okay, right, I'm gonna sign out for now then because I am slowing down quite a lot. I need to pick up the pace a little bit. So, uh, yeah, we check back in uh, either a bit later in the run or at the end. See ya. Right, 14.3 miles in. Uh, two hours, 57 minutes gone. It's, uh, I'm feeling okay. Um, my headphones just died. So, I've got no podcast for the last four miles, but never mind. It's okay, I'm in a good rhythm, so. I used to really rely on podcasts to stop me going off too fast, but now, as usually happens, but at this point in the training block, I'm quite tuned into that easy pace. Well, I am taking it a bit easier than normal today, which is, oh yeah, I'm feeling okay. Um, feeling a bit tired now. Left shoulder is a little bit sore. My right glute is a little bit sore. The calf is fine. The ankle, not the ankle, the left sole of my foot's okay. And the top of my right leg is all right. So I'm really pleased that this run is going well. And this is quite a pivotal run for me, I think. If this had gone belly up, I would have had to really, really looked at this training plan and really change some things around. But it's going well, so less than four miles to go now. We're uh, on the home stretch, so it started raining, which I don't mind, to be honest, this late in the run because it cools you down a bit. Anyway, let's get the rest of this run done. Check back in when we're finished. And I'm done. 18.2 miles, average pace of 12, 29 miles. That is very slow, but I don't care. Been careful coming back from the hard effort from race day that did me in a little bit. I'm so happy. My glutes are a bit sore. I'm going to need to get back on the strength training. Absolutely. Do some extra glute work. But I'm so happy now. That's it. 18 miles done. 91% of the fundraising done. Five weeks to go. It's looking good, guys. It's looking good. Fingers crossed. I don't get injured in the next few weeks. But this is why I'm taking it easy now. So, yeah. Absolutely made up. I've still got some mileage to cover this week. I may do a run tomorrow. Very easy. Recovery run. Watch this space. Back again. So, it's Saturday morning and I'm just coming, walking back from Park Run. So, I was at two miles ago to go, I went to lay in, but um, I was wide awake-ish by half eight. I thought, why not, let's just go. So I did. So very, very gentle recovery run. So it's a mile and a half there. It's a park run. The last half a mile I had to go a bit faster than I planned because I was running late. I nearly missed the start. Uh, park run was fine. Um, it's it a fairly tricky course. So it's Colchester Castle Park run I did today, which is slightly easier than Highwoods, but saying slightly easier than Highwoods isn't really saying much. Um, took that very slow. I don't know what my time is yet, but you're probably talking about 38 minutes, which is very slow for me. But my legs just felt like lead. Um, nothing painful, just tired, obviously, but it's quite good practice to have. Um, just go for a tunnel. Ooh. So yeah, basically like a quite good to sort of running on tired legs as it were, but not overdoing it. And then I did half a mile run back on the way back to round me up to five, which is what the plan was. So that's uh, 
effectively five mile easy run done, which was in my plan. So I've only missed the speed session out this week, which I know it's not great to miss speed sessions, but because I'm coming back from not exactly an injury, but you know, I'm just taking it a little bit easy this week. Uh, I'm happy with that, as I said earlier in the video. You know, I've decided now I need to look more at the bigger picture rather than just fixating on every run and every week in isolation. Like, well, I've got to do this, I must do that. Because, you know, that's what I did last time and it didn't go too well in the end. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this week. I think, how many miles is that for the week then? So, 18 plus 4, 22, 20, 27 miles for the week, which is pretty good. So over a marathon Woo so yeah happy with that so that's it for the week I'm not so I'm not gonna try and squeeze that speed session in tomorrow or anything I think especially as a speed session it wouldn't be too much do need to do my strength session probably do that tomorrow or actually no I can't do it tomorrow I'll do it this, this, this afternoon I need a little break um and yeah that's it so really chuffed with the week really pleased to be back on track uh, next week, hopefully, I can just follow that plan, which will be a 20 mile run, then for the long run, and whatever else is to come, and then we're right back on, on plan for London. Alright, thanks for watching, everyone. Sorry for the lack of videos in the last couple of weeks, but hopefully, we're it's business as usual now. Alright, take care. Thanks for watching.